I have been so blessed to be here with all of you for these last six months as your bridge pastor. And although I take my leave today, it is just a see you later, because I'll be back from time to time until your settled pastor takes their place among you. This time has been one in which we have served God by serving one another. Some of you have told me that there has been much healing for you as a congregation during my time here. I feel a lively sense of optimism for you and with you in that healing. Over these months together, I sense a feeling of joy as you welcome back each other from the lonely days of COVID and you welcome new folks into this congregation. And once again, you open your doors wide to the community. You have welcomed me with open arms. And as we begin to say, isn't that funny, the door just blew shut. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> as we begin to say our see you laters today, I have been healing too. The pandemic took a serious toll on all of us. When I actually retired in December of 2020, it was after worshiping on Facebook and doing church meetings on Zoom for nine months in my last congregation. Although my retirement had been planned, it was still difficult for me to leave my former congregation in the midst of COVID and in such in uncertainty. Fortunately for them, the time worked out for them to call Reverend Don Remick as their interim as my departure. I had known Don for all the years of my ministry since he had been my association advisor when I was in seminary and we kept touch all those years. He eventually became all of ours, all of ours, yours too conference minister during the transition as we moved from being the Massachusetts Conference of the United Church of Christ to the Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ. That position coincided, his, the ending of that position coincided with my time leaving Randolph. Randolph who needed an interim pastor. And so they selected Dawn or shall I say, God selected Don for all of them. God provided, his providence provided for him and for that church. As I retired, I went back to my home church in Weymouth. Shortly after that, I was asked to help out my pastor while they searched for an associate pastor. Other opportunities emerged and before I knew it, I was fully engaged in ministry again. <laughs> Doing public supply most of last summer, which was when I actually got my first email from Barbara LaValle. Divine Providence, again, God provided me to serve you. Well, I was also being served by all of you. It has been a delightful, two-way street of healing. Maybe that will be something you could put out somewhere in your parking lot, a street sign that says, Healing Street, <laughs> Holy, Holy Road, this way. <laughs> well, that'd be fun, huh? The Healing Road goes two ways. For a while, you and I concluded our services saying, we are all walking each other home, remember? Yeah. We're all walking each other home. And then someone suggested that we change that to, do not worry, do not fear the future, because God is already there. Remember? Remember that? These two statements remain true. So as we continue to walk one another home, my friends, do not worry. Do not worry about the future, because God is already there. 
I pray that you will continue to be the faithful people that I have come to know you as, and that your ministry together in Christ's name will bring you joy in awakening to Christ, in your awareness of Christ, and in being alive in him. And that your new pastor will also come to experience the extraordinary in the ordinary lives that we live here as Christ calls them to serve with you at the Federated Church of Norfolk. During your time since your last settled pastor took leave, you have taken many bold steps together. So many of you have stepped up to leadership positions that maybe you never realized God was calling you to. So many of you have offered pastoral care to one another while you've awaited your new pastor. You have kept this church going in so many ways. And as I think about all of you, I think of the joy and the camaraderie and the what was the word you used? Civility? Did you say that? Friendship? Friendship. <laughs> I don't know what I heard. The friendship, the deepening of the bonds of faith that Christ it continues to bring about for you. And um, I want to just say that, that um, you have shown me something today that I, I, don't, I don't know how to express it other than it has been a healing for me. You have shown me today through these beautiful gifts that you have given me. The flowers, the birdhouse, the stained glass, that you have truly seen me. I don't know if there's any greater gift that you could have given me. I feel seen, I feel heard. You have ministered to me, and my healing will continue as I pray to God that yours will as well. We will step forward together, but before we step forward together, we will step together downstairs. <laughs> I don't know, somebody tell me where that expression, let them eat cake, came from. <laughs> 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 and then you all cried. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry to bring her up, but that's what that has come to me. Um, I want to say thank you to Katie for such beautiful music while I've been here. You have just inspired me so much to learn how to play the piano. <laughs> And uh, you have such a beautiful voice and such a soft and gentle and intelligent spirit about you. Grace and Ricky are downstairs. They're not up here, but I wanted to offer a word of thanks to them as well for the ministry that they've been providing for all of us by being acolytes and being so attentive during the children's messages and being so kind and helpful to me. I want to thank each and every one of you for the ministry that you've given to me. Nicole, the bulletins, even though I mess them up every single week. <laughs> Maybe when I come back in June, there will be another trick in there for me, right? But thank you for everything. Um, Barbara, the professionalism here that, uh, that you have all shown to me has just really, you know, um, honored the stole that I have the privilege of wearing, the robe that I have the privilege of wearing. Um, I don't know what else to say, quiet. Whoa, you're my fellow. Thank you, Tom. I have a chair up here now that I can sit on if I did take a little tumble. Thank you for the railing here, which certainly suits all of our needs. Appreciated, much appreciated. And and I you know, I just I hope um, that as I say to you that I have felt seen by all of you that you have also felt seen by me because I see you. I see each and every one of you. Even those that are not able to be here today, I, I have seen you and I've heard you. And I pray that this is a gift that 
we will continue to not just give to one another, but to give to everybody, you know? What a gift to see and to be seen. You know, Christ has awakened in us new eyes and hearts of love. I think that's probably all that uh, I'm gonna say other than I'll see you later. <laughs> bye bye for now. <laughs> signing off, signing out. <laughs> Thank you. As we come to our time of prayer before God and with one another today, we ask for prayers for Donna Henry. Donna was transferred by ambulance uh, yesterday, day before, uh, to the Whittier Rehabilitation Center in Westboro, Mass. Uh, as it turned out from Donna's fall, she fractured her coccyx bone and a thoracic vertebrae. She is still in a lot of pain, but has been fitted for a back brace. So please pray that this will give her some much needed relief. If you'd like to send her a card, her address is in your bulletin here. Um, note that it said Westwood up top, but it's actually Westboro, the address that's given there for you. I did speak with Donna again yesterday and you know, um, progress is very, very slow, um, still in a lot of pain, but they actually got her up for seven minutes yesterday. And I guess that's the longest that she's been up um, since she injured herself maybe two, two weeks ago Friday, I think it was. Prayers also for uh, Liz Davies. Liz Davy uh, had MOHS surgery. Liz, where are you? Right here. She had surgery on her cheek for some skin cancer this past Wednesday. The surgery was more extensive than she had hoped for and will result in some scarring and potentially more treatment. We pray today for your recovery and for your ability to get back to work in the garden. Continued prayers for Bucky as he recovers from his recent heart surgery. We pray he's gaining more and more strength each day and that he will be able to join us for worship soon. Oh, praise God. Why don't, why don't, why don't you read that, somebody? <laughs> I can't read my own praise. Somebody else read it. Go ahead, please. <laughs> praise that God sent Reverend Mary Lou to FCON for these past six months. Her time with us was uplifting. We give praise that we will get to see her on some Sundays during the summer, and we pray that she enjoys her summer with her husband, children, and grandchildren. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And a praise report for Sam Woodward and four other young men from Boy Scout Troop 80. They were awarded their Eagle Scout rank on Friday evening. Congratulations, Sam and fellow Scouts. What an accomplishment. And we say a praise happy birthday to Gail Knowles this past week. Gail, we're so glad to see you up and about. Uh, exactly one month after your surgery. You might remember that Gail had her foot surgery on Good Friday, April 15th, and here you are on May 15th. So welcome back and happy birthday. I have um, other prayers to add. Uh, 
Madge Stacy is in Rhode Island Hospital recovering from surgery on a blood clot on her inner leg. And I see Jan is with us. Jan Newman had the sad news this week that her sister Barbara passed away. Our condolences to you, Jan. We're glad that you're here with us today. Shanna and Colin Kennedy and their children. Colin was deployed to Africa yesterday. We are prayer for his and the other service people's safety and prayers for Shanna and the children as they adjust to his lengthy absence. Are there others to be lifted in prayer today? Yeah. Just an up to the puppy's home. Bucky's home. Oh, yes. Bucky is home. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Not ready for visitors yet, right. Barbara, right? No. Bucky, he's not ready for visitors yet. No. Bucky is not ready for visitors at home yet. No. He's home. No visitors yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Joni Sullivan, who is starting uh, chemotherapy. Joni Sullivan. Joni Sullivan, who's starting chemotherapy. Marilyn, are you raising your hand? No, you are raising your hand. Oh, okay. 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 You know, um, we live in very strange times. Um, our world is facing so much uncertainty right now. And uh, not that it's really anything new, because life is always uncertain. Um, but I think that things have gone awry, you know, and I pray that we can keep the people of Ukraine in our prayers today. And you know, we're also taught to pray for our enemies, so we must also keep the people of Russia in our prayers. For they are not all the enemy. You know, there's some very powerful leaders in some of our countries right now, some current and some former, that seem to get delight in stirring the pot. You know, so I pray that we would be pot stirrers ourselves in a reverse direction, you know, and that we would be reminded each and every day that we serve our God, our God who holds each and every one who is in harm's way, in the palm of his hands, holds them in the palm of his hands. So what we could pray today, I think, is that those who are suffering, those who are going to be faced with creating new lives, that somewhere during this horrible ordeal, that they have been touched by the kindness of someone, that someone has been that extension cord for them, letting them see the light and the love of God in their darkest days. So with these and others in our hearts and our minds right now, let us spend a moment in silence, lifting all these before God and also lifting our own needs the desires of our heart before God. Merciful, loving, compassionate God. We are so grateful for your ear this day to hear our prayers. Our prayers that maybe come from my mouth, but come from all of our hearts. 
we are grateful for this congregation that we feel free to bring our cares and concerns to you. That we might express pastoral care and concern to one another. God, sometimes we are tired. Sometimes we are weary hearing the news and sometimes we feel helpless. But God, please show us. Shine your light to our path so we may find ways to help. That you might reverse this tide. That indeed you might be parting Red Seas again. But God, the divides in our world right now are very deep. But we pray that they are only superficial and that the wounds that are inflicted will heal, will heal in your most merciful time. We pray for those who are sick and for those who are recovering. We pray for all who are in need of food and shelter. We pray to be instruments of your peace and instruments of your love and of your great healing. We pray to see and be seen, to know that you have created us for your purpose and you have created us exactly as we are to serve you. Oh, holy God, as we move forward this day, may our hearts and our minds continue to turn to you. May we reach out our hand to take the hand of our Savior, who leads us in his paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yo, that we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You are with us. You provide for us. You anoint our heads with oil. Our cups indeed runneth over. <coughs> May joy continue to lead the path for us as we go forward to serve you in the ways in which you call.
as we prepare to close our worship service today, I want to make sure I call your attention to this photo that Nicole put in the bulletin for us today. And, um, you know, I'm going to miss you, and I, I think you're going to miss me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so this, is a, this is a picture that, you know, is us just kind of leaning in on each other, just snuggling up together, you know, being one in the Spirit, one in the Lord. And as we close our time of worship today, please take a hand. Come, take a hand, take a hand, Lord of Light, and make us whole again, healing us, loving us, and walking us into the future, the future where there is no need to fear because God is already there. there. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you. Oh, so. <laughs>